2022 has been a quiet year for Rad Power Bike so far. Early in the year, they announced and released their latest iteration of their Rad Mini foldable e-bike, the Rad Expand 5, which was mostly a rehash of the previous generation's Rad Mini Step Through 2, with a few key components omitted. Other than this, there have been no other major releases for months. Now in December, Rad is finally announcing a new e-bike model that isn't just re-releasing an older e-bike with a new number next to its name and some minor changes. I'm looking at you, Rad Runner 2. They're doing something completely different, and they've just revealed their latest e-bike, one of their most consistently requested models. However, it's not an e-bike. Instead, it's a three-wheeled Rad Trike 1. But before we get into the Rad Trike, I'd like to ask that if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Please consider subscribing if you want more of my e-bike or e-trike, I guess, videos sent your way. Thank you. Now let's get into it. Rad's core mission has always been to, as they put it, create a world where transportation is energy efficient, enjoyable, and accessible to all. However, unfortunately, the accessible to all part was only for those that were able to ride a two-wheel bicycle, regardless of physical restrictions. Rad's customers have been asking for a three-wheeled option that would let elderly riders or riders that, for whatever reason, prevented them from using a standard bike to get out there and ride just like everybody else. Apparently, Rad had in fact been listening and was working behind the scenes for years on a possible solution. I wanted to go over the components and features of this new electric tricycle and see if it was worth the money. In my component review style videos, I prefer to go over bike stats and compare them directly to a comparable bike, either from a competing manufacturer or perhaps the previous iteration of that bike. However, there are not a ton of electric trikes out there and even less from major e-bike manufacturers and even fewer still that are in this price range. So I thought I'd just review the stats and features of the Rad Trike by itself and let you decide if it's right for you. The Rad Trike comes with the standard 750 watt geared hub motor, but since it's a trike, it's located in the front wheel instead of the rear. Rad has been withholding many of the specifications of their motors now, so I wouldn't be able to tell you the torque rating that it's capable of. The motor on the Rad Trike is a custom made Rad Power Bikes branded motor, which means that it is more than likely made by a third party just for Rad and they slap their name on it. Many e-bike manufacturers are doing that these days. Powering this motor is a 48 volt 10 amp hour or 480 watt hour battery, presumably with Samsung cells, but again, Rad has been withholding this information lately as well. The battery is a bit smaller power wise than their standard Rad battery, which normally comes in at 14 amp hours or 672 watt hours. Previously, the only bike in Rad's lineup that used this smaller type of battery was the economy priced Rad Mission 1, but that has since been discontinued. The battery is mounted externally to the down tube step through area. It's interesting to see that Rad is sticking to the external batteries with this new model. The majority of the new e-bike models being released on the market today are switching to an integrated battery system for better protection and aesthetics. I assume that Rad stuck with the external batteries to keep costs low and to maintain backward compatibility, something that Rad tends to do. However, Rad indicated that this new 10 amp hour battery is not backward compatible with their older models. So with that in mind, it's possible that the 14 amp hour battery isn't compatible with the Rad Trek either. There does seem to be a lot of room in this step through area where this battery is located, but I would have liked to see it mounted somewhere else, like maybe behind the seat tube to maximize this legroom. The battery itself looks to be designed very similar to the regular external batteries that they've had for years. However, it seems that Rad tweaked the design just a bit. Overall, the battery looks to be more streamlined and has an updated battery level indicator built in. The older Rad batteries had a basic four light indicator bar, but this new one adopted the more detailed battery charge indicator that the Rad semi-integrated batteries now have. Rad indicates that this motor battery combo should give you about 20 to 35 miles of range per charge. Given the added weight of the frame and the smaller battery, I'd say you probably get closer to 15 to 20 miles max per charge using pedal assist. Speaking of weight, the Rad Trike is coming in at 82 pounds, making it their heaviest model. The next closest is the Rad Wagon 4 that comes in at almost 77 pounds. The added weight is of course partially due to the third wheel and the added material that goes along with the design of a trike. However, the frame itself is made of steel as opposed to aluminum like most other e-bikes are made of these days making it slightly heavier, but in turn, stronger. The Rad Trike seems to be only available in one color option. I hope you like gray. The Trike comes in at 59.3 inches long and 33 inches wide, and the wheelbase comes in at 41.3 inches. The standover height is only 13.4 inches from the ground, making its step through frame extremely accessible. The handlebar reach is coming in at about 18 inches as well. 
The recommended rider height for the Red Trike is pretty broad, 4'10 and taller. Since riding a trike is a more upright seated position, rather than leaning over, it seems that there shouldn't be major issues with taller riders like you would encounter with two wheels. The cargo carrying capacity is rated at a whopping 415 pounds total. That's 65 pounds more than the Rad Wagon is able to carry. The Rad Trike has an integrated rear rack built right onto the frame, which has a 60 pound carry capacity. The low standover height, as I mentioned before, is due in part to the low step through frame as well as the smaller wheels that the Rad Trike comes with. The Trike comes equipped with 18 by 2 and a quarter inch Kenda tires, making it low to the ground and much more stable. The Kenda tires come with a street tread pattern, which makes sense since you probably won't be taking this trike for much off-roading. While it's not the standard 20-inch wheel size that I would have expected, I'm glad that they at least went with 18-inch wheels, which are still pretty common and are available from other manufacturers. So you should be able to find 18-inch tires and tubes easily if you decide to go with another style or rat is suddenly out of stock and replacements. One downside to the smaller wheels though, that it sort of makes the Rad Trike look like a mobility scooter. The brakes, or I should say brake, that this trike comes with is a standard 180mm mechanical disc brake. However, since it's a trike, Rad decided to keep it simple and only provided a single disc brake on the front wheel. Most of the braking power on a bike comes from the front wheel, about up to 70% on average, so that's where most of your stopping power is going to come from. The Rad trike does have a rear braking system, however, it's a coaster brake, also known as a back pedal brake. I would prefer to see rear disc brakes given the amount of weight that you may be hauling around on this trike, but that of course would add extra complications to the design and maintenance. It's not uncommon for an e-trike to come with front and rear disc braking, however compared to the price that the red trike is coming in at, those other trikes are generally more expensive. This brake setup does have a nice new feature, a parking brake. Since trikes don't have a kickstand like a bicycle to prevent it from rolling while you're mounting or dismounting, this parking brake should make it more steady for riders to get on and off the trike. The seat that the Rad Trike comes with should provide stability and comfort while riding as well. The seat that comes on the trike has an extra wide saddle with a padded backrest standard. This seat can be adjusted from a minimum to maximum height of 28 to almost 35 and a half inches from the ground. Pedaling from this seat looks like it should be comfortable and the drivetrain that the trike has should make it an overall smooth experience. Like a few of their previous e-bike models, the Rad Runners and the Rad Mission 1, Rad chose to go with a single speed drivetrain, 16 tooth sprocket in the back and a 42 tooth chain ring at the crank. Since the Rad trike is limited to 14 miles per hour with motor assistance, this gear ratio should be just fine for those kinds of speeds. A nice steady cruising speed while pedaling. However, since it only has one gear, you may have troubles if you live in especially hilly areas. While other red bikes previously came with a chain ring guard that protected only the front chain ring, the chain itself was typically exposed. With the Rad trike, Rad added a full chain guard that runs the entire length of the top of the chain, making things much more safe and less likely to have anything get messy or stuck in the chain while riding. Rad has opted to remove the walk mode function from the Rad trike. Given how awkward it would be to try to walk along with a trike, I can understand why they'd remove it. In its place, Rad added the ability to reverse instead. Since trikes are less nimble than bikes in general, the ability to back up should add to its maneuverability in tight areas. This reverse mode will be limited to just over two and a half miles per hour max. The Rad trike will be coming with much of the same components that are mostly standard on many e-bikes these days. Front headlight and rear taillight with brake light functionality, a half twist throttle on the right handlebar grip, and the standard five levels of pedal assist, plastic fenders for all three wheels that prevent the elements from getting kicked up onto you while riding, and mounting points that let you add a basket or rack to the front of the bike, sold separately. However, like their last e-bike release, the Rad Xpand 5, the Rad Trike doesn't come with any type of suspension. This means that with the small 18-inch slim tires, no front suspension fork, and a hard tail in the rear, the ride may not be as smooth as some would have hoped for. I've heard from a good number of people that the lack of a front fork suspension is a deal breaker for any no. bike. No, 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 hell no, 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 I refuse, no, no. So I'm a bit surprised that Rad decided to again go with the rigid fork on the Rad trike. Attached to these front forks appears to be the same foldable stem that the Rad Expand comes with and the same BMX styled handlebars that the Rad Runner comes with. The folding stem is a nice feature since you really don't have the option of laying down the trike flat like you would normally with a two-wheeled bike. If you're going to be traveling with your trike in the back of an SUV or van, 
This folding stem, along with removing the seat, should give you a much lower storage height and the ability to fit the trike in spaces where it would normally be too tall otherwise. The user interface display on these handlebars looks to be new as well. Well, sort of new. Thankfully, Rad didn't simply just throw on the extremely outdated LED display that they've been using on the Rad Runner and Rad Expand. This new display looks like they took the dual display interface that comes on the Rad Rover 6 Plus and Rad City 5 Plus and cut it in half. Rad did away with the center screen that had the speed, odometer, and wattage and such, and left the remote section that simply gives you the battery level, headlight indicator, and your pedal assist level. A good number of riders may prefer the more simplified controls, however I assume that a majority of riders would prefer a full display. An LCD display screen is pretty much a standard component on almost all e-bikes these days. So I find it a bit strange how Rad Power Bikes continues to release new bikes with a basic bare bones LED interface. I realize that Rad is trying to keep costs low, but almost every other e-bike manufacturer gives you a full-fledged display screen, and a good number of them sell their bikes at costs below what Rad sells theirs for. Since Rad usually offers an upgrade for $100 on their site, it seems like it's more like passing this cost on to the consumer instead of absorbing it into their profit margins. Although Rad hasn't announced if they're going to have a display upgrade for this one just yet. So while I'm glad that they've upgraded their lower end display, I'm a bit disappointed that they still haven't made efforts to make full display screens standard on all of their models. But oh well. One thing I wanted to make special note of on the Rad trike is the assembly process. Rad e-bikes come almost entirely assembled and normally only need a few components attached to get you up and running. However, putting the Rad trike together seems like a much more of an undertaking. The frame comes in two halves and it will need to be bolted together by the owner. All three fenders need to be added with multiple bolts each, attaching and connecting the front headlight, as well as both pedals in the seat. The handlebar assembly needs to be bolted on as well, and you'll need to connect much of the cables to link the front half of the trike with the back half. It's nothing too complicated and everything is color coded, but I know some riders simply don't want to deal with any type of cable work. I usually recommend assembling your e-bike yourself. Normally it's a really easy process and gives you a basic knowledge of the components on your bike when the time comes for something simple like changing a tire or a tube. But with the Rad Trike, I would suggest possibly consider paying for someone to put it together for you, especially if you're not mechanically inclined. I definitely recommend watching the assembly video to see the entire process. Now we come to the main question, just how much is it? The Rad Trike will be coming in at Rad's most expensive model, $2,499. The average cost of an e-trike will normally range anywhere from $2,500 all the way up to the mid $3,000 range. So while the price is up there, it's about what I'd expect for an affordable e-trike in this class. This price doesn't factor in any accessories or add-ons that you may want to pick up with the trike. Since the Rad Trike has no suspension, many riders may want to pick up a suspension seat post to smooth out those bumps. However, the seat appears to have 7.8mm rails as opposed to the standard 7mm, so you may have trouble finding one that will work. Personally, I feel that a large storage basket in the rear is a must on this trike, since the included rear rack is pretty bare without one. For the price of the trike, I would have liked Rad to throw in a large basket for the rear rack, since most other trikes, whether they be electronic or standard pedal powered, come with this either included or built right onto the frame already. But in the end, do I think that the Rad trike is a good value? That's hard to say. If you're unable to ride a two-wheeled bike for whatever reason, or you just prefer the stability and feel of a trike, and you're looking for one that comes from a major e-bike manufacturer, then it's not a bad option. As I mentioned, there's not a ton of other e-bikes on the market from brands that I recognize, but the ones I have seen come with much more components and features, of course, at an added cost. Most other trikes that I've seen come with a front suspension, a full display screen, and a much larger battery. Not to mention full disc brakes, a multi-gear drivetrain, and a built-in storage basket instead of just an empty rack. If some or all of these were included, then I'd say the Rad Trike would be a must-buy for those looking for an electric tricycle. But without them, the Rad Trike kind of looks empty. Regardless, let me know what you think of the Rad Trike, or if you plan on picking one up, let me know down in the comments. I'm really interested in what people have to say about it. I just want to say that I'm not getting paid by Rad for saying any of this, and these are all my own honest opinions. I wasn't approached by Rad to make a video, and I didn't get a Rad Trike sent to me to review. I do hope that you enjoyed watching this video though, and I hope that you received some valuable information from it. If you did, please like and subscribe, and maybe leave a comment, it would be most appreciated. Even if you don't, I thank you for watching, and stay safe.